All right, so here I'm gonna show the the dropper loop. So I'm just simply gonna take a you know, line, wrap it over itself, and I'm gonna I'm gonna loop it. We're gonna do like seven or eight times because that'll give us about three or four wraps on the line. So here you go. Make sure it's on this side that you're getting all of it because this side will have one extra. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight's good. Should have four wraps, right? So then you, I put it through, and I'm gonna pull. This is what it's looking like. So I don't know if you can see it, but I, yeah, it's not going to focus, but there's about four wraps on each side if you look closely. So that's a good, that's a good dropper loop. That's what you need for, you know, lighter tests. Maybe you want to go more and for heavier tests, you want to go less, but I think when you see four visible coils on each side, for about 20 pound and 30 pound, you're good. So, you know, I've tied a couple of these dropper loops now, and you know, it's the ones here that we're not so worried about because they have coils on both sides and they, you know, they compress pretty well. But it's when you have a fish on with the loop up here where the force is pulling on one side, you only have coils on one side. And I think that's a lot of times what happens when it slips first. So let's see, let's see, maybe, maybe these will break first, but maybe this one will. So I wanna see, and I wanna see what, what it breaks at. All right, so here we go with dropper loops. And yeah, I'm just going to say it right off the bat. I was pretty surprised at just how weak some of these dropper loops are. And it's surprising because I've used dropper loops quite a bit. And I mean, mostly it's with a high-low rig or a chicken rig. And when I'm doing that, usually I'm bottom fishing and I'm oversizing the mono or fluoro. So, you know, using 40, 50, even 60 pound test from what I read, uh, it really doesn't matter as much when you're using heavy test. And they actually do hold up a lot better, I guess, because of the thicker diameter. But in two of the cases for the Vanish, the dropper loop failed on the main line where the coils are in this in this test exactly and also later on with the uh, with the sixth test of the vanish so yes going forward though I definitely won't be tying a dropper loop probably for a teaser on 20 pound liter if you know say I'm going for for stripers or something and you want you know you want a teaser with a with your bucktail or something that you're using for stripers but you, you know you have a, a lighter leader line uh, I do think there could be you know a little bit of a danger there if uh, you know you get a big striper on the teaser what I have started doing is moving away from dropper loops and now I think a better knot is uh, it's called the T T knot dropper loop, and what it essentially is is just a double overhand knot combined with a dropper loop. And I think the um, I'll do some testing on this um, probably later on just to see if it is all that much better. But from a preliminary testing standpoint and just seeing how how the knot looks and how it would work. It does seem 
that it would have a lot better uh, results because a double overhand knot actually is good when you pull on the loop and then the having the coils behind that knot prevents them from slipping so yeah we'll uh, we'll check that knot out and uh, I definitely do like it I have been using it and I don't haven't had any issues yet Here's the second instance when the dropper loop failed on the lower loop. And yeah, this was the, uh, Vanish is the only, uh, fluorocarbon on this set of tests that the lower loop failed. The Sunline and the Blue Label all had failures at the, the loop being pulled. And, uh... Just something to note that I noticed while doing this testing, these dropper loops definitely slipped a lot more than any other knots that I've uh, tested so far. And I really think that is one of the main reasons why they fail so easily. It's because when you think about it, any, any sort of movement within the knot is is pretty much a small amount of failure happening and there's you know friction forces on the knot and the more it moves the more um it you know elongates and it pulls and then gets weaker and weaker so i think that's why the palomar knot does so good is it just doesn't move at all but you know many other knots that that move or slip a little bit uh yeah, they definitely seem to get weaker and then eventually break. All right, Hi. so that's uh, about it. Uh, I'm going to let the rest of the video play out with some background music. And enjoy, and uh, see you at the end when we have the results. Sunline. Dropper loop. Dropper loop.
So I don't know if you've been paying attention to the blue label, but it's been pretty, pretty bad, especially with that one right there. 10.7. Yikes. So there you have it, final results, and pretty much the same type of uh, strength as we were getting with the Perfection Loop Nut on both Vanish and Sunline, but the Blue Label definitely came in here with a pretty, pretty bad showing, 65%, and yeah, that's actually the worst uh, out of anything, out of any knot tested so far, but uh, still some more to come and I guess as a summary just uh, be careful using dropper loops especially with uh, light line and fluorocarbon